Factor 11 laser focus. Hopefully you all enjoy. Make sure to subscribe if you do. Japan. And sold to the contractor. As a forsaken freedom is carried off stage, the crowd begins to whisper uneasily. Oh my, an upset just when I began to get bored. You can feel Callum's hand shake as he pulls your paddle down. How is the contractor always one step ahead of us? It doesn't matter that he's ahead. We're still in the game, Callum. What? With what plan? Easy. We can still stealth mode this operation. Think about it, we're phantoms. We could easily sneak in, grab the painting before anyone bats an eye. We have to be fast, near flawless, to pull something like that off on such short notice. Lucky for us, I am flawless. He weighs your options for a moment, and finally... Let's do it. I'm not letting some cookie-cutter guy a hopeful anywhere near our case. So, stealth mode's a good. I am so here for that. The painting is still in the museum. They have to prepare it for transport with the contractor. If we can find out where they're taking it, then we can cut them off before it disappears, along with the encryption key. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. My schematics show a back room not far from your location where you can short rest. While the other guests adamantly discuss the contractor's bid, you follow Vivian's directions and slip through the small door to the side. Alright, I paid off a waiter to sneak you in some threads. Get changed. And take your time. I still need to locate the where the painting is being packed up for shipment. I'll check back in once I have it. Callum raises his eyebrows at the inconspicuous brown package taped under a table and pulls out a sleek suit. Your mission suit's in here too. Let's make it fast. Hey, where's the fire? Vivian said to take our time. I just... I want to get everything back on track. As you take the package from him, you read Kellum's guarded expression carefully. There's something there that he's not letting on about. We both know out of the two of us I'm the better liar. I disagree. I'm usually far too obvious. You're m misdirecting on purpose. I keep my cards close to my chest. But we're a team. Stop hiding and talk to me about it already. You deflect like it's your job, never letting anyone get close. I thought we were past this. I hope you trust me by now. Elliot, it's not that I don't trust you. No? Well, you have a funny way of showing it. He shakes his head, pushing roughly through the doorway to an adjoining room. He shouts the next words over his shoulder. You don't get it, Jones. I've spent my whole life training, so I never have to be a disappointment. Face the facts, we didn't secure the painting, we let the architect swoop in without any sort of fail-safes, and we failed. I failed. Buries his head in his hands, you place a comforting hand on his back, trying to soothe him. Since when do you give up that easy? I just see how it is. This is just like the Cayman Isles. This was my mission and I couldn't fulfill it. My father will be rolling in his grave. The graves don't botch missions, they just don't. Even if you're up against an unknown enemy, we may be phantoms, but even we can't predict the future. You reach out and lightly grasp his arm, hoping it'll be comfort, but he swallows and glances down at your hand. No one blames you for what happened, so why should you blame yourself? God, you being kind to me is almost more insufferable than your constant flirting. He gives a wry half smile, but his eyes burn. Warm and intense, he places a hand on your chest. Chesticles. <laughs> Hopefully I made you laugh. <laughs> when we slept together, I hoped it would get you out from underneath my skin, but you keep surprising me. He just he just up and puts his hand on your chest, okay. What can I say? I'm a hard one to forget. It's more than that. There's just something about you that keeps pulling me back in. You wonder if Callum can feel how hard your heart is beating under his touch. You reach up to place your hand on top of his. Well, it's literally on your chest, so... I don't want to be a person who always pushes away the ones they want. And I want you. 
He leans forward and his mouth is on yours, unyielding, insistent. Your hands drop to his hips of their own accord. Your fingers clutch the fabric of his waist, pulling him closer until you can't imagine where your body or his body begins and yours ends. Elliot. The kiss has a touch of desperation in it. His, uh, he calms suddenly everywhere on you, neck, waist, lips. Your heart beats impossibly fast, every inch of you yearns for him. God, Callum, I want you to. His hands trail down your arm to lace his fingers with yours. He touches his forehead to yours with a whisper. If all we have is this moment, Elliot, I don't want to waste it to you. I mean, focus on your mission, dude. I thought I thought you gave a shit about your mission. I thought you gave a shit about your dad rolling around in his grave. Yet we're hey, you went about to go out well, well right quick. Get get over yourself. I feel it too, Callum, but do you really want to rush it that badly? He takes a deep breath, and you will your heated skin to cool as his fingers untangle from yours. I just I wish I didn't feel like we were rushing. Mm. When this mission is over, we can take all the time we want. You're right. Vivian doesn't need more material. He rakes away from you to return to his closet, and his absence floods you with a cold rush of water. Before you join him, you pull on your mission outfit, willing yourself back into your professional cadence. Not long after, an ominous knock raps loudly on the door, in time with the uh, Imperial March from Star Wars. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, taken? Just open the door, Elliot. And with one hand on your pistol, you crack open the door to see... Nice. Pretty blue dress. Vivian, what are you doing here? Why aren't you in the van? You yank Vivian into the room, closing the door before any of the Galagasts notice. Vivian smirks at both of you, dusting off her skirt. Ah, good. You're decent. I dare say I've done it again. Um, Vivian, I was not expecting you back in the field. Last... yep, yeah, same. Last time you ended up hiding behind a craps table while the contractor shot at us. Does this mean you want to become a phantom agent? Ha 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 No. I have no choice. The vault below ground is so secure the comms won't operate on a remote network. I annoyingly need you to patch me in the museum's security system. Welcome to the life of a phantom. It's all about adapting. Ugh, you'll adapt. I'll be drinking my weight in Shirley Temples and wishing I was literally anywhere else. But I'll take my solace in watching you fit into that. She points over the top of Callum's head where a large vent gently blows circulating air into the room. Callum groans. Vince, this is so cliche. Well, it's my first time getting to see spies crawl around in some ductwork, so humor me. Consider yourself humored. What's on the other side? Other side may be optimistic. It's a bit of a hike, but it's the straightest path to the security room. And not that it'll be easy. I'm sure it's booby-trapped to hell and back. Vivian, do you think it's gonna really be that bad? I mean, we're professionals. We've seen a laser here or there. Yes, a place even I can't even hack into. We'll have other security measures in place, big ones. And if we find them, we'll deal with them. You don't need to worry about us. I wouldn't worry if you had these. She rummages through her purse, nearly dropping it in her excitement, and takes out a pair of high-tech glasses with a camera poised above one of the lenses. Goggles? Not just any goggles, my dear Elliot. Mission vision. Infrared lasers won't be able to hide when you don these bad babies. Uh, we see all the lasers. No surprises. Precisely. They match our mission outfits. You're welcome. Eh, they would ensure we don't get caught or slow down while we go after the painting. It's a good investment. But we, but we already own... Like... The tech she's using. I think I'm just saying, like, why, like, I, I just move on. Makes no sense to me. Like, imagine standing there going, you know, I know I'm your friend, I know I'm part of the company, I know I'm helping you to save the world, but listen, I'm gonna need 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh my god. <laughs> yes, here's your $20. Go to the vending machine now, Vivian. I always like a no surprises guarantee. Hand them over. Yes! These are gonna look so good on you. Vivian practically shoves the mission, or yeah, mission vision goggles in your hand. Sharing an amused smile with Callum, you slip on the goggles. Look! I've now come from cyberpunk. I like the black outfit, though. You blink and look around the room, taking in how everything looks darker, but also oddly sharper. It's like I'm wearing sunglasses within that enhance my vision. Does that mean they're working? That's how they're designed. Though I haven't had any field experience. Uh, we should test them out just to ensure they work. I'm wounded. You wouldn't... You would doubt my gadgets after all we've been through. Hey, you know what? Nelly's dead. Oh, that's how you make her go back to the man. It's not that I just can't afford any more mistakes today. She nods and then ushers you to one of the exhibit rooms you'd previously seen. She gestures to a few pieces of art along the opposite wall. These pieces look pretty old. I bet there's some sort of invisible security on them. You look around, spawning an antique vase from a feudal Japan and a bust with a set of royal jewels. Look at the jewels. Vaz, you may think that the jewels are worth a lot, but actually something from feudal Japan is worth significantly more. Okay, but don't actually touch anything. That's the whole point. Eating her advice, you approach the vase and adjust the goggles on your face. Calm lingers behind you. Is it working? Maybe. I just need to get closer. As you mess with the controls of your mission vision, the lasers flick to life right beneath your nose. Bingo. There's a set coming from the corners of the stand. Good thing we're after a painting today instead. I told you it would work. As you move closer to the display, you feel an intense heat radiating from the lasers. Watch out, I think these lasers aren't just for tripping alarms. They might slice us pretty good too. Like a lightsaber? Cool! Only if you're not having to dance around them good spot, Jones. I can't say I'm in the mood for playing Slice and Dice today. You glance up at the vent Vivian mentioned, checking for any barriers or lasers, and it's clear. Looks like these will really change the game, Vivian. You remove your mission vision goggles, uh, the unlasered room coming back into view. You, Callum and Vivian, return to the closet and get into position under the vent. You'd better get going. We have less than an hour before the painting moves to the loading dock. Then let's go hijack some art. Callum unscrews the van's bolts and they'll hoist himself inside the ducks. You give Vivian one final nod before following after him. The vents are a tight squeeze, but you and Callum inch through on your hands and knees. This is cozy. You act like it's your first time crawling through a ventilation system. Wasn't this covered in your basic training? Your eyes fall to his hips, the fabric of his trousers stretched over the curve of his rear as he moves. Of course it was. There just wasn't a gorgeous man in front of me at the time. And I must say, the view is phenomenal. Don't tell me you're turned on by something as simple as a bend at the waist. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Them other brothers can't deny. <laughs> okay, Callum, there's a song for a reason, okay? Not all of us are simple-minded like that, but you know... I just had to. It's not just any waste. It's a waste of a star agent. Callum Gray who keeps himself in phenomenal shape. Although you can't see his face, you hear a, a huff in what could be pride. Focus, Jones. Don't worry, I'm super focused. Would you keep the quips to a minimum while closing in on the security room? Shouldn't I have led the way? Because, you know, I have the goggles and you don't. Callum stops in front of a vent panel just ahead, easing it open with total in total silence. Just ahead, two guards are completely oblivious to your entrance. Look at that guy! How much do you think his toupee cost? You know, who knows? Maybe he wants to spend their money on janky art instead. How should we subdue the guards? Simple. You karate chalk, or do a falcon nerve pinch. Let's go with a good old double-fashioned sneak attack. So, you want to grab some coffee in a minute? The break room coffee sucks. Besides, I'm trying to cut back. I'm learning to like peppermint tea.
Why are you trying to cut back? Just, why do people, ch like, why is this a thing? Why do you cut back on coffee? Oh, you and Callum rush in, grabbing the guards in a chokehold. They fight and flail against you, grasping at their necks until they both slump out of their chairs unconscious. How come you never do that to me when I ask? Mmm. You never say please. Now plug Vivian in, I'll restrain them in case they wake up early. Turning to the server, you search around a moment before finding the right port for Vivian's device. When you plug it in, your comms crackle to life. Ground control to Major Tom. Come in, Star Command. Is this thing even on? Star Command, I, I approve. We read you loud and clear, Vivian. Perfect. Give me another minute and I'll have a much better idea of what path you need to take. Great. We can take a minute. Just as the words leave your lips, a figure drops down from the fence behind you. Jones Company. The figure straightens to his full height, glaring at you from across the room. Callum raises his fists. Just what do you think you're doing? I don't know, Genji or Hanzo, which one should it be? We were just here to... Look at the art! I don't know, let's fight. Anyway, Harado launches himself at you and Callum. He devastatingly fast, landing a punch on Callum's stomach before sweeping your legs. Oof, can't we all just get along? What's happening? The feeds are all still loading. Our friend from the auction paid us a visit, the one who almost wanted, uh, also wanted Forsaken Freedom. I called it. I said he was fishy. Didn't I tell you he was fishy? You concentrate on trying to find a break in Harado's defenses, but he blocks each of your blows with the skill of a well-trained martial artist. Nice moves, Harado. Where'd you learn them? I'm always in the market for a new teacher. Harado's eyes narrow and he winds up for another roundhouse kick. Too bad you won't be around long enough to find out. Block his kick, redirect his momentum. With a grunt, he managed to catch his leg just as it connects with your chest. Right back at you. Using his momentum, you turn with the force of his kick to throw him to the ground. Yep, next one. My turn to leave a mark. Elm swings in behind you, aiming a kick at his prone body, but he rolls out at the last second, leaping back to his feet. They can't stop us from reaching that painting. Your employers sent assassins after us before. We're ready for anything you throw at us. What employer? You think I... He grunts as you hook his ankle, sending him crashing to the floor. Callum places a boot on his throat. The architect and his contractor aren't going home with the forsaken freedom Gaia is. Hold on. I'm working. I'm not working for the architect. We're on the same side. You and Callum glance at each other. He eases his foot off Harado's neck. If you're not with the architect, then who? Just who the hell are you? Agent Harado Tanaka, Japanese intelligence. We received a tip about a plot involving Forsaken Freedom. My mission was to win it at the auction before it fell into the wrong hands, but I suppose we both failed. Callum takes a deep breath, his eyes still wary of Harado. We're fandoms for Gaia. We were assigned the same mission. Personally, I feel as though every, or I embody everything it means to be a top agent for Gaia, so I'm a little insulted you didn't notice. Harada squints as he gets to his feet, glancing to Callum for confirmation. Callum takes out his badge and shows it to him. We're undercover. Our objective was to get the painting before the architect could, but... Wait, exactly where did this tip come from? I don't know. It was made anonymously with no traceable IP address. That's because they played you again. They're one step ahead. They thought that they you would be busy fighting with him, and they're probably slipping out the back door of the painting as we speak. And yet this was someone who knew about the encryption key. Wait, did Malcolm say he had a failsafe in case the architect killed him? Maybe he had the tip sent posthumously. Encryption key, so that's why the ransomware hacker wants it. The key might unlock information that could be the architect's downfall. Hey, I'm loving that you're all becoming BFFs right now, but we also uh, have a time-sensitive thing going on here. Right, architect and contractor might have won the painting at the auction, but it hasn't left the vault yet. We need to steal it back from them before it leaves the museum. You seem to be planning the same move. I was, but I did not expect to tango tonight with two phantoms. Honestly, this seems a bit above my pay grade. You tangoed pretty well, by the way. With your skills, you could definitely be an asset. 
please, the more the merrier. Especially if he's got extensive knowledge of the museum. I may be in the system now, but it's laggy. If it's for my country, I'll do whatever you ask of me, and I'll do it well. Recruit him as an ally to navigate through the museum. You also come in handy if you get in a sticky situation. Listen, does he... <laughs> does he come with a bow and an arrow and he goes, And releases dragons when he shoots? If you play Overwatch, you get this. Anyway, I'm done here. What the hell? Three heads are better than one. You obviously have skills we could use on our side. Not to mention your knowledge of the museum will come in handy. I'm so proud you made a new friend and didn't entail blackmail. Our tech expert Vivian says hello. Oh, hello. Is she a guy of phantom as well? No, a civilian helping us on our mission. She'll be helping us reach the vault, but please feel free to take charge. Very well. In that case. He points behind you at another vent panel. This is our path forward to the storage vault. Yep, that tracks with what's coming through on my end. Thank God we get to double check with you two. Just one thing before we go. Are you sure you're up for this? Earlier you said this was above your pay grade. I just want to make sure you're prepared for what might go down. Rana nods without flinching. Yes, I failed my mission to recover Forsaken Freedom. It will not happen again. I will do my duty to help you take down this architect. In that case, welcome to the team. You give the bindings on the guards a one last tug and then follow Harado back into the vents. Follow my lead. This should be mostly straightforward, but there are some turns ahead. Let's see which way. Uh, make a right here, left, right. Each fork of the vents, Harado unhesitantly turns in the chosen direction. Callum touches his earpiece. Vivian. Wow, yeah, guy's good. He's maneuvering faster than I can map it out. What are we going to do with the two know-it-alls? I am not trying to make you feel inferior, Agent Jones. You don't have to try, Harada. Ouch. You continue on. He's leading the way as you descend further into the museum's vault. Callum makes conversation. Anyway, Agent Tanaka. Harada, please. Harada, does Japanese intelligence have any information on the architect they'd be willing to share with Gaia? We may. What do you know about him so far? Absolutely s squat. Uh, mostly that he's cold-blooded, doesn't hesitate to kill anyone who doesn't won't serve him anymore. A textbook lone wolf sociopath. Hmm. Really? You seem surprised by that. Well, from what we've observed, he doesn't seem sociopath. Based on his actions so far, we believed he's operating from a collectivist standpoint. And I agree with him. You're kidding. What, he thinks he's doing what is good for the greater good? Something along those lines. Usually the types of terrorists are inspired by emotional ties or some sort of empathic doctrine. Hmm, the architect emotional? That may be something we have to consider. I'll have to admit, it's hard to imagine him as someone having emotions, but I don't, uh, I doubt he's always been like this. Perhaps something happened to him to make him like this? Well, it's like the saying in Batman. You, uh, either die as the hero, or, uh, pretty much see yourself become the villain. Humans can be driven to extremes, given the right circumstances. Or if they've gone through some sort of trauma. I... I agree. He seems keen to inflict it on other people. Violent cycles do not appear out of thin air. Perhaps he experienced a great loss. Financial troubles, abuse, that sort of thing. The three of you travel further through the thin systems, trying not to knock your elbows into the sides. How did you get in the spy business, Serato, if you don't mind the personal question? Oh, well, that's... He hesitates at an intersection, the question having thrown him off. I got this one. Take a left here. You all turn left while Harada begins to answer. I guess I'd have to... It was always an impulse for risk-taking. Uh, things that get one's adrenaline pumping. I watched a spy show as a child. Developed a bit of an obsession. My parents enrolled me in sports and martial arts. Anyway, it took some time and plenty of training, but I got there in the end. Hmm. That's so... Admirable. Is it? 
Yeah, sure. You had a dream as a kid, and you grew up maintaining it until you made it a reality. Usually, my reasons are... cliché. Uh, there isn't a spy out there who didn't want to be James Bond at some point. This is true. Even I wish I could be James Bond, but, you know... I digress. I settled for being a content creator. <laughs> oh, God, it hurts. That, that just huge de-escalation right there. Not me. I wanted to be anything, but there was no fantasy, just drills and hard work. If I knew what it entailed, I would have been less inclined. Eh, you do now, and you're still here. Uh, though I imagine anything I do it must seem insignificant to two phantoms. We're always looking for the best to recruit. Those who go above and beyond, I'd say you qualify. One last turn up ahead. Looks like you can go left or right, but I'm not quite sure which is better. Vivian says we can go either uh, way up ahead. Harado? He thinks it over for a moment and then turns left. This way. It goes over some storage closets. Uh, where does the other way go over? The bathrooms. I appreciate you looking out for us. Hey, listen, I had to stop. I need to wash my hands after being in this dirty van and also maybe go to the bathroom. Finally, the three of you reach the other vent panel, though uh, through the cracks you can see intricate wire walkways. This is it. Below should be a catwalk that spans the storage vaults. One step closer. After you lower the vent panel, you drop silently onto two long catwalks that extend over the width of the room below. Careful, this is where they keep the finest art. There will be security systems in place. You peer over the catwalk. There are several sealed and locked room doors in the room, which uh, a guard protects. Oh, we don't get to see the guard? Oh, I'm sure it's a stereotypical one they use for guards. Before you can move forward, you take out the mission vision goggles and put them on. Oh boy, hope you're up for a challenge. How many lasers are we up against? My vision just lit up like a Christmas tree, so a lot. You grimly assess the field of red lasers that appears before you all along the catwalk. Some of them are even moving. A note of caution, agents. These lasers aren't just infrared. If they hit you, they hurt. I may have a scar or two to prove it. Ah, you've been here before. He rolls up a sleeve, showing you an angry red welt on his forearm. Oh, don't forget they'll trigger an alarm. I might be able to shut it down if it's triggered, but that's a big if. Okay, so no pressure then. Super low stakes, a failed mission, personal bodily harm. What could go wrong? Thanks to the goggles, you can easily see the first laser follows a set route, going up and down at a steady speed. Damn. This one moves. Timing is everything. As the laser ascends towards the ceiling, you line up your next move. Okay, ceiling, duck under. As the laser begins to ascend towards the ceiling again, you rush under it. Pardon me. Ducking under the laser's horizontal line, you make it to the other side. Phew! Laser master! Well done, just say when. Rush the laser, waiting for it to ascend again. Now. Elam and Harado follow your movements, ducking under the red line just in time. Oh, this definitely gets the blood pumping. Are you okay? No blaster holes in you or anything? No guards alerted? You peer down at the guards who continue on about their business. We're in the clear. You carve a serpentine trail through the lasers. The last vent panel is several feet away. Between it, you stand three intersecting lasers, creating an impassable asterisk. There's no move that results in me not getting hit by those lasers. Mm, the guard's circling back. There's always a path forward, Jones. It's times like this when I like to say, when in doubt, just avoid your problems. Hang from the catwalk. You monitor the laser's movements as you climb underneath them, hanging onto the metal catwalk with your fingers. Careful. Careful. But the metal bars of the catwalk rattle a little and the guard directly underneath you looks around. You wait with bated breath until she's at ease again. Now well, that's how it's done. You swing yourself back onto the catwalk successfully, having evaded all the lasers. Not bad, could be smoother though. Oh, piss off. 
Hail and waits for your signal, and then effortlessly uses the catwalk like monkey bars at the playground. The guards don't even stir. Show off. On my fault, I'm skilled. Rado goes next. He might as well be made out of air for all the noise he makes. Easy enough. After this, we're getting uh, pointers from you. That would save us time, should we ever find ourselves in a similar predicament. The vent will bring you right through into Freedom Storage. You take off Mission Vision goggles and then climb up into the... We couldn't have found a better goddamn name for this shit. Final vent system, ready to get your hands on the painting. And it's gone. Not long after, Callum passes into the vents as he appears in a storage room below. Looks like we uh, weren't too late after all. As he drops down, you see it. Forsaken Freedom. Hanging from the opposite wall. Thank God it's still there. Breathing in a similar sigh of relief, her auto drops to the floor behind Callum. The two of them turn to help you down from the vent. Hey, I can get used to this. Anytime. Don't encourage her. Jones already is far too pampered. You notice the only exit is a large set of doors behind you, directly opposite of the painting. Well, I don't think we'll be going back through the vents. The painting's too big. We can worry about that later. Let's get what we came for first. Before you can move, you hold up a hand and sweep the room with your goggles. Wait, there are lasers down here too, all along the floor. You cautiously place your feet between the lattice of lasers, swallowing at the heat you can feel coming off of them. The alarm doesn't trip. All this trouble for one painting. No, all this trouble for one encryption key. Finally, you make it to the Forsaken Freedom and take your goggles off. Now, we can... But, as you're reaching the painting, the doors behind you begin to creak open. Damn it. They're here to collect the painting. We can't lose this. We need to escape. I have an idea. Toronto, go. Auctioneer breezes in, speaking to someone trailing behind them. Ah, uh, we're pleased to reunite you with your well-earned... Oh. Your auctioneer stumbles back in shock, even as a painting's buyer steps forward. As you take the newcomer in, you can feel your blood drain from your face. This can't be real. Yeah, it's your partner. What a surprise. Well, you picked a fine place for a reunion, Elliot. If you can name that tune, you win a point. Anyway, uh, remember, if you did enjoy the content, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below. Plenty of cool links. Check those out. Be great to have your support with the channel. There's also the join feature and the super chat feature as well. There's many features for you to help out on. If you're not able to, that is fine. How dare you, though? No, I'm kidding. Um, you know, share the channel. Share the content. It'd be greatly appreciated because let me put this this way. We're going on 3,800 videos. Many, many years of content you have to watch. Many, many games. Many, many things. Seriously. And uh, it'd be great to have you check out the content. So, let me say the following. No one here is surprised that your partner is alive. No one. No one here is surprised. But... Is it your real partner, or is it someone who has been crafted to look like him, meaning surgery, you know, kind of like face-off, right? Something like that. It would not be outside the realm of possibilities. Just saying. Because, as he's mentioning, a reunion. Unless it's because he always wears that big helmet. So, we guess we'll find out soon. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. But without further ado, I love your beautiful faces, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace out.